Hey gang, this episode of WTF is sponsored by Stamps.com. Go to Stamps.com and type in WTF when you click the radio microphone to start a free trial and get a $110 bonus offer. That's Stamps.com. Do it. It's good. I'm telling you. Lock the gate! Are we doing this? Really? Wait for it. Are we doing this? Wait for it. How? What the fuck? WTF. And it's also, eh, what the fuck? What's wrong with me? It's time for WTF. What the fuck? With Mark Marin. Okay, let's do this. How are you, what the fuckers? What the fuck, buddies? What the fucking ears? What the fuck, Nicks? What the fuckstables? What the fuck, Amalans? What the fuck, Colombians? What the fuck, Ricans? What the fuck, Anucks? Uh, what the fucksters, what the fuck sticks. All right, that's it. That's as, that's as far as I'm going to go. Welcome to the show. I am Mark Marin. This is WTF. It's a pretty exciting week in my mind because I'm, I'm like, uh, look, I, I don't know if you know this about me, but I have a propensity towards uh, being a fucking fanboy sometimes. Uh, I'm, I'm not ashamed of it. It's just sometimes I can't always, it's very hard when I have to talk to actors who are playing roles that I dig because I can't really separate them from the role that I dig. And I expect on some level in my mind to talk to the guy that they're playing. I'm talking to John Hamm today, and there's only a couple of shows that I watch regularly that I can't not watch and one of them is Mad Men, and one of them is Breaking Bad. So today, I'm talking to John Hamm. On Thursday, I'm talking to Brian Cranston. Now, in my mind, you know, I'm talking to Don Draper, and then I'm talking to Mr. White, Walter White. That's in my mind that you know that's that's I. It's very hard for me to separate the them from their from their roles because I've built a relationship with those characters. Obviously, they don't know me, and in my mind, I know their characters, and in, in, in my mind, I know these guys are actors, but there's something, I don't know, I, yeah, I'm i 47, oh shit, just turned 48, fuck me, god damn it, 48, last week, it'll be, it, it, it's going to be all right, it'll be all right, you know, it, it just keeps going, I should be, I'm excited to be alive, I don't feel old, I do feel uh, a little fat, but I, you know, again, we're not going to do that, I'm a man, it's time for me to fucking man up. And to act like a goddamn man. All right, that's something that Don Draper does for the most part. Something Walter White does in his own fucked up way. I just can't. When am I just going to be comfortable? You know, I'm not going to, I'm not going to, let me, let me plug a couple of things first because I think I neglect to plug myself. I end up, you know, doing some promos for other things. I, I am going to be at the Punchline in San Francisco, November 2nd through 5th. Please come out. Love that club. Love that city. We had a great time there the last time. I'm going to be at the Neptune Theater in Seattle on November 25th. I know those dates are sparse, but I'm taking a few months off to get the get to work on the book, to continue working on the book. I'm sitting here looking at this mountain of uh, of, of writing. I've got notebooks. I've got these diaries that I I kept when I when I uh, when my wife left me a week after my wife left me. I was just going out onto the deck, sitting there and writing this painful shit every day. I'm looking through that stuff. And I got to tell you, man, just I, I'm annoying myself reading that, uh, how fucked up I was in the head. But it, I think it's going to be good shit. So the dates are a little sparse. So those are those are those regional dates. Pacific Northwest, Punchline, San Francisco, November 2nd through 5th, Neptune Theater, Seattle, November 25th. I'll be around town here in L.A. doing some stuff. I don't really plug that. Oh, and I, for, I forgot I have a CD out that I'm very proud of. This has to be funny. That's still on sale. That's been on sale for about a month. Uh, it did pretty well. It's doing pretty well. But if you didn't get it, I think you'd like it. This has to be funny. Available on iTunes and at Amazon. Or you can go to my website and order it, and I'll send you a signed copy of it. Maybe a couple stickers. Huh? A couple stickers? Hmm? Yeah. I'm going to be talking to John Hamm here in a second, and i got to get over this shit. All right. I'm over it. Let's move on. What? Uh, why do I keep judging myself again? I, you know what? Let me read an email because I, I think there's something to, to be gleaned here. This just has a subject line, comments and suggestions. Hey, Mark, I've been listening for a while. I love the podcast. It is amazing that somehow your podcast, Mark, has become a character 
that I have heard change. When I first started listening, I listened because I loved comedy, and yours was a serious podcast about the art of comedy. The tone used to be so sharp and searching. Now it is mellowed and is more comfortable, so settled in itself, and I really enjoy listening to that voice. Thanks. I hope that was not too personal. Uh, that's from Clark. I, you, look, I'm glad you hear that. I mean, some days are better than others, but I just got off the road and I'm carrying about like 10 extra pounds of biscuits and gravy and ice cream and cupcakes and baked goods. And I don't know. I, you know, I thought that there was a point as a man where I would just say, fuck it. I'm all right. Who gives a shit? You know, why, why do I have to work so hard or, or think about my goddamn body image? Am I a 15 year old woman? And I know I've talked about this before, but Jesus Christ. I mean, now I'm like, I'm trying to do that ridiculous uh, four-hour body diet. I can't read that book. I, you know, I, someone gave me the book. Are you fucking kidding me? It's filled with science and math and, and balancing things. And then in the end, it's just about, it's a, like a whole chapter or two about how to fuck for a long time. It's a crazy book. I just want to know what I can and can't eat and how am I going to lose this fucking weight so I feel more comfortable with myself. Here's, I, here's the test I do. I don't know if you ever do this as a man is stand in front of your mirror in the bathroom and sort of jump up and down and just see, you know, how much jiggle you get, like how much of your body or what your skin has become this weird, you know, thin or not so thin layer of just like a, a fat suit. Like, I just want to see, you know, how the fat suit is hanging on me. And I thought I was cool with this, man. I was ready to change pant sizes. I was ready to grow the fuck up and man up to just being comfortable, enjoying my fucking food and living my life. No, no, that's not going to happen. It's it's apparently not going to happen. So I don't mean to disappoint you, Clark, but uh, but that whole uh, comfortable, settled in self thing. Right now, I'm a self settled in a uh, slightly fat suit for me, and I and I know, like you know, I I don't want to offend people that perhaps have you know genuine weight issues. You know, I have genuine mind issues about weight. So now I'm on this website and I'm looking up foods I can eat and it's basically there you can't eat any any sort of sugar or or white flour or anything white you can't eat. It's basically just meat and vegetables and then I get to this point yesterday where I go over to a party over at my buddy Jonah Ray's house and I couldn't find anything to eat anywhere. I didn't I hadn't gone shopping and I was like famished and all I wanted to eat was fucking meat and I get to this barbecue and there's just a there's a few chicken breast cooked, some sausages, and then he throws a steak on the grill for me and I sat there like an animal eating chicken, sausage, and steak with my hands and I'd never felt so good in my life. I'd never connected so deeply in that moment to just the taste of blood. Awesome. I guess that's all part of it. It's part of this, uh, you know, man thing. Fucking blood, baby. Animal shit. Fuck it. I just, I didn't want to talk about this. I didn't want to talk about jumping and jiggling. That, that was not the, the theme for today. Jumping and jiggling. I mean, I've got John Hamm, arguably one of the most handsome men in the fucking world, coming in here. And I'm, you know, and I'm like, you know, thinking about jumping and jiggling. Unbelievable. So, whatever. I hear other dudes. There's plenty of dudes that talk about this shit. You know, this is how this. You know, you just got to find your dudes. You got to find your, your, uh, your, your slightly. Uh, you know, uh, I don't know what you call it. Uh, you know, your dudes that are sort of have an inner 15, 16 year old girl who you know sit around and talk about that shit. It's not sports. It's not like you know, man, I kick some guy's ass. It's like, yeah, damn it, I feel fat. You feel fat? Okay, I, I don't think I can sell that as a show. But, you know, I'm just saying it happens. But there are other things that happen where I'm like, why can't I man up to this shit? I got home from the road. There's a stink in my house. And I knew the stink. I've had the stink before once, you know, since I've lived here. There was a rotting carcass of something under the house. And I, and I, and I knew it had to be dealt with. Something had crawled under my house and died. I didn't know what it was. I assumed it was a possum. And and quite honestly, the last time that happened, you know, I was ready to go under there. Look, in my mind, I was ready to go under there. I was going to deal with that thing. I was going to get a bag, put on a mask, you know, maybe a hazmat suit, you know, try to, you know, meditate on the fact that there's nothing scary about a animal corpse. But come on, let's be honest. There's something scary about any kind of corpse. It's rotting, dead flesh of uh, you know, organic, something that was once prancing around. It could come back to life. There's zombies all over the place now. 
fucking zombie land out there. I've not seen a possum zombie. Oh, man, I just pictured it. Awful. I mean, they're pretty fucking awful. I'm not going to... You know what? I've talked enough about possums. So here I was in this predicament, and I had the same thoughts I had last time. Well, how long could it take to rot? Yeah, I can wait that out. But no, if there's one rotting thing under a small house, the entire house becomes just this shrine of death smell. And you're basically living in the spirit of the of the dead animal. I, that's what I was. My my house had become a some sort of shrine to dead rodent. And I'm like, all right, this is it, dude. This is the test. This is what you're going to do. You're going to get under there. You're going to you, you just put on some shitty pants and you're going to fucking do it. You know, go under there with a bag, man up to this shit. It's just a dead animal. This is your fucking house. How long could it take? How long of your life could it take to just get this done? You'd be in and out in a half an hour, and you would feel great about yourself because you, you dealt with it. You dealt with the dead thing, and you threw it away. So I meditated on that for a while, and then I called my friend Didi, who called her friend Jose, who came over to do this possum. This little guy doesn't speak English, suited up. Took him like 20 minutes, went under there. I felt guilty about it. It was some sort of white man's burden bullshit guilt. Like, you know, I should be doing this. But then there's the other side of it. It's like, dude, you know, this is, it's easy for him. You give him 50 bucks, wants 50 bucks. Why not? Just, you know, you don't have to live through this in your life. But then I got to live with the, the guilt of not doing So he goes under there. He pulls it out and he says it's a rat. So now I got to deal with that. It's not even a possum. It's a fucking rat. Rats are horrendous. I never see rats around here. Now the knowledge. See, I, I knew that rats were kind of everywhere, but I didn't know they were in my house or under my house. And these rats out here, I think they're these South American rats. They're like huge. He pulls this thing out. He goes, rat. And I'm like, no, possum. He goes, no, rat. And I'm like, oh, fuck. Rat? God damn it. So I gave him 60 bucks. That was worth $10 extra, a rat, because I certainly, if I was under the house and dealt with a dead rat, I mean, that would have been touch and go. I might have just freaked out, jumped up, smacked my head on the baseboards, and it might have been a, a tragedy under the house. It might have been two dead things under there. A rat. He goes, you want to look at it? He wanted to open the bag. I'm like, no, man, I don't want to look at it. I believe you. So now I got rats somewhere. They're out there. They're everywhere. We're surrounded and my house has become a place where they come to die. God damn it. Fucking rats. All right. I'm over it. Let's talk to John Ham. Got to get the rat out of my head. Decomposing rat out. Next time, though, you guys. Next time, when this happens next year or the year after or even six months, I'm, I, here's my goal. I'm going to be fat and I'm not going to give a shit and I'm going to Go under my house and pull a dead rat out without even flinching. This is my journey as a man. All right? Mark my words. Fat and rats, I'm going to overcome both of them. Hey, you guys. Most of you know that I send out a lot of stuff. I send out stuff to you guys. If you subscribe, if you buy a T-shirt, you buy a CD, I send it to you. I send it right here out of the garage. Most of it comes out of my garage, and I go down to the post office. I got a buddy down there. They all know me. That's how much time I spend at the post office. I got my pal Victor down there. So now I get an opportunity to share with you this new thing, this Stamps.com thing, which I never knew about because I think things are too complicated. You know, I'd heard about Stamps.com where you can just do all your own post office stuff at home, but I always thought like, oh, man, that's going to be kind of a pain in the ass. And what about Victor? I don't want Victor to be down there all alone at the post office, not seeing me, me not seeing him, my old pal at the post office. But let me tell you something. I got on to Stamps.com. They sent me a scale. I went to Stamps.com. I'm on the website. You can do anything, man. You can do anything you can do at a post office at stamps.com. You know, you can buy and print uh, U.S. postage using your own computer and printer. It takes like two minutes to get on to stamps.com and get started. You get postage for all of your letters and packages like instantly. You just print up your own stamps. When is there a thing where I can print up my own money? And then all you got to do is give the mail directly to the guy that comes to the house, who isn't Victor, who I don't know that well, quite frankly, so I don't have a lot invested in that relationship. But you never have to go to the post office again. 
You don't got to buy a postage meter. You know, look, I don't advertise anything on here that I can't get behind. And I was excited to print up stamps. That's the kind of person I am. I was excited to print up my own stamps. And then there's party that thinks are like, are these real stamps? Yes, they're real stamps. If you go to stamps.com right now, I have a special offer for you. If you enter my promo code WTF, you can start a no risk trial with a $110 bonus offer, which includes the digital scale and a $55 uh, free bank of postage. You can just, you got 55 bucks to make your stamps. I don't know if I can use the scale for uh, weighing food for when I go back on Weight Watchers, but that's a, that's another issue and I don't want to clutter anything here. All I know is that this is a limited time only deal. Go to stamps.com and right when you're there, the first thing you do is click on the radio microphone at the top of the home page and type in WTF. All right. And you get this deal. I'm printing stamps right after I tell you this because I just like printing stamps. Then you stick them on things and you just hand them to the guy. I don't got to go down to the post office. That's stamps.com. Enter WTF. Oh, what about Victor? I, I guess I'm going to have to start. I don't know. I mean, yeah, maybe we'll, we can meet for coffee or something. That's going to be weird. But I just I just don't really need to go to the post office anymore. Hmm. Stamps.com. Enter WTF. <laughs> I thought about putting a central air, but I, you know it seems to be an issue if the crawl space isn't right or something. In your house, house? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. Isn't there a way they can put it under? Do you know about this kind of stuff? Can you install my ceiling fan after the interview? No. You can't put in a ceiling fan. No. <laughs> Do you have any? I mean, you know what? Honestly, yeah, I can. You, <laughs> you can? I literally can. I've done it before many times. Yeah. That was my like first. One of my like first jobs when I came to L.A. was putting in electrician stuff, like. Handyman? Switch, yeah, like switches and painting and ceiling fans and all that shit. You were a handyman? Essentially. And so, like, you had, a, like, a, a bunch of uh, middle-aged women? No, it was actually, like, a bunch of gay dudes. Oh, so you had gay dudes that yeah. sat around going, oh, could you just... I just need... <laughs> can you can make you, sure it's working? Can you do, like, tile? <laughs> and I was like, oh, yeah, they, they just, sure. Would they just uh, sit there watching you grout? In the Cat Ranch garage, John Hamm is here with a beard. I, why do I feel like I just saw you a week ago and you did not have a beard? You did see me a week ago, but I, I'm sure I had a version of this. Yeah, it, you got the thick uh, hair face. Sure. Now mine takes forever. So is that for something? No, it's just lazy. Yeah? Yeah. I don't like to shave. I, I don't either. So, uh, Drag. It's, uh, yeah, and I always uh, cut my face up and it makes it feel no. weird. Do you ever get professional shaves? I've done it w- once. That's good, though, right? It's better than doing it yourself. It's kind of nice. You lay down. You no, get it's, the a, hot it's, thing. A, it's a lovely. It's a lovely. It's a. It. It, it seems like it should be luxurious, and yeah. then you realize like that's what ladies do with their business yeah. all the time, every fucking day. And almost. that's not like that's not luxurious at all. No, that's like a that's like a procedure. <laughs> yeah, I I don't know when that happens. Like God bless him. Like yeah, Mazel tov, Yeah, holy cow, that yeah. seems like a brutal. Yeah, and then none of them describe it as anything but. But a pain a in the horror ass. show. Yeah. yeah, but there was a time that I remember in my life. I'm a little older than you, where that didn't happen. You just took what no. was there. It was, <laughs> it was fine. Like good to go. Yeah, full hair. I'm that, not concerned honestly, with it. I honestly think that's the lesson to be learned from from all of that. Yeah. Like you're, you, you, we're we're good. Yeah, we're kind of yeah, good. Yeah. Whatever you got is yeah. good. Yeah, we'll get past it. We'll get. <laughs> we'll we'll we will <laughs> adapt. We will work with that. We're uh, yeah. I it's always super, I, well. You know, I think I've had the conversation. Uh, before sometimes if there's too much attention paid to the grooming i'm, I'm uh, it's a little off putting i agree it's a little more information than i needed yeah and, and it feels like there's an expectation <laughs> of, know, what? of of some kind of performance <laughs> or or something that uh, maybe i'm not prepared to <laughs> wait, wait. to put in yeah so you think that they, there's an expectation on their part or you're waiting for it to yeah, do something, something. different i yes. don't know <laughs> It's like if you look at a, at a car that's yeah. clearly been souped up. Yeah, yeah. You think, like, oh, well, that's uh, probably... That's, hope I can drive that. I don't know, man. This probably takes a lot of skill. <laughs> yeah, it looks, looks a little out of my hands. So, uh, all right. Now, I, I have to overcome a bit of... Uh, like, I'm a, you know, I'm actually a big fan of the show. Of, of Mad the Men. podcast? Of Mad Men. Yeah, of my podcast. <laughs> no. And it, it's, it's very... Uh, Thank you. A, and... Uh, like, there's very few shows that resonate with me completely, but somehow or another, you know, that one has burrowed its way into the culture in a big way and into my mind, you as a character. So I have to overcome some of that as we converse. Okay. Uh, because I know that you've been around comedy for a long time, but I've never met you before. 
But you were around before you did Mad Men. You used to hang oh, out yeah. at Largo and stuff, Largo, right? Largo, M Bar. In fact, I saw you at M Bar. I'm going to go with 2001, 2002 around oh, that, around God that damn, world. Really? Yeah. Um, I was going to show. I was. It was. A, it was a cheap way of of entertain. It was a cheap form of entertainment. Yeah. I had no money. Right. And. And I knew guys in that world, so I didn't have to stand in line. I could yeah. call and say, like, hey, yeah. can you put me on the list? Right. And so for five bucks or whatever the cover was, you could go and, and hang out. Hang out and, and watch have fun. People be funny. And it was it was it was right at the at the beginning of the wave of the Patton Oswalt's and Death Ray. Of all those guys. Yes. And so it was super funny. Yeah. It jibed it happened to jibe with my particular sense of humor yeah and it was people that were relatively around my age so it was right. kind of like all right like it was it was something to do yeah and so, it wasn't going to a club and spending a hundred dollars and not getting laid and yeah, like yeah, whatever yeah. it was just like were uh, you ever a club guy i could never i, can, I could I, never do it i was nah. kind of like eh, i don't yeah. know what i'm doing here yeah. i feel like i'm wearing the wrong shirt and <laughs> you know like, it's just it. never right <laughs> So I'm, like, I'm always five years too old. <laughs> really? Yeah. And, uh, and have the wrong. I never look. could. Yeah, I could never do it. So, like, but I never met you during that time, so I never knew you as just like uh, an actor dude who was hanging around comedy. I mean, uh, honestly, like, half the people in that world just assumed I was like Schrader's friend. <laughs> well, like, they didn't know I was, I was an actor at all. Oh, really? And I, I remember uh, I was playing cards with Sarah Silverman at yeah. one point. She was like, oh, my God, I saw you on TV. I didn't know you were an actor. I was like, yeah, whatever. Yeah, so I come to it, though, like not knowing that, but knowing in retrospect and then, you know, get, getting familiar with you through your work completely and not knowing you as just this dude that was hanging around. So I've got to overcome this sort of idea that, like, you know, holy fuck, I've watched every episode of this show. Like, I'm still not Hollywood enough to completely behave <laughs> like a guy <laughs> who's just sort of, eh, we're just kind of hanging out. We're in the same business. This character had a profound effect on me and a profound effect on culture. And do you ever, I mean, as a guy who's playing that character, I know that it's got to come with a lot of baggage, but do you ever think about why it has such a profound impact as a, as a masculine type? Uh, sure. I mean, I, I've thought, I've, I think about it a lot. I think about a, a lot of aspects of the show. Why, why did it hit the way it hit? I mean, yeah. it's, it, it, if you look at it in a vacuum, there's no way that show should have been successful. Right. Um, it was on a network that no one had heard of for for uh, for scripted television. Right. They went there to watch reruns of Die Hard yeah. and whatever. Yeah. Um, and it was a it's a it's a it's a very thinky show, which also not necessarily high up in our current cultural needs. Yeah, no, absolutely um, not. And 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 it, but it is pretty. It's it's pretty. Yeah. That's 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 the kind of the one thing it had going for it, and it had a guy uh, that created it that came off The Sopranos. Right. So it it had enough to 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 tease people into watching it, right? But the fact that it has done what it's done, as you say, in the culture, is is mystifying. And and but I think there is some kind of uh, reason for it. And and I, I, but but what it is, I really don't know. I I have, I have a th theories that yeah, maybe we've swung so far to one one side with the kind of Apatow version right. of the of the you know sort of man child yeah adam sandler sure. characters that, yeah that finally there needed to be this response or the pendulum had to swing the other way for this kind of classically masculine dad figure who is grown up e even though he's got his own set of issues well i mean there it, but it, it's a complicated male character sure. i mean it's not like even if it's not the apatow model or, or the man child model which you see a lot in comedies but even in in dramas you know, those are fairly uncomplicated characters. And this Draper character is is pretty deep and pretty like mysterious and weird in a lot of ways. Yeah, I mean it's and 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 it was, you know, it's 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 a hundred percent of of Matt's creation. I mean he he could have he could have made this a story about advertising in the sixties and blah 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 and not had any of that. Yeah. Um but it's 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 a it's a credit to his storytelling, I think. Um and and it's given the, the the series legs, I think, as well to to layer in this this mystery and what, how did this guy get here? And it's about America and what you can do in America in the post war era of redefining yourself and what you were doesn't matter and that's a very American thing. And also inventing you know, modern advertising and inventing uh, the American conception of uh, what a modern man is. Yeah, that's the that's the kind of parallel uh, story. Is while yeah. this guy is reinventing himself, he's also explaining to 
the other the, his job is yeah. to tell you know the 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 public what they want what yeah. they're what they're what will make them happy and when you have discussions with uh with him what his wiener right that's his last name yeah. wiener yeah uh do you i mean how when he's directing you or or when he's you know helping you conceive of what where this guy's coming from outside of the script how much baggage does he put into your brain about what this is propelling um not a lot and and i think that's i, I think a big part of that is just i, I have no problem uh, trusting him. Yeah. Uh, and I don't demand, Hey, where's this going? Like, I don't, I don't, you know, I don't need it. You're not that guy. I'm not that guy. And, uh, <laughs> but, but I, but I, 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 I feel like the, the trust has been well-founded. I mean, yeah. it's, it's, uh, it's not like, I'm um, flying blind here. It's, right. I'm like, okay, I, I, I get that you're going to land this plane. Right. And I'm going to go along for the ride and I'll do as, as, as good a job as I can episode to episode. And we don't yeah. see the episodes ahead of time. We don't go into the writer's room and look at the board or anything. Right. Because I, I, I'd rather not. I yeah. mean, um, it's, it's, a, it's an old sort of thing, but like playing the ending is no fun for anybody. Right. And, you know, spoiling it is like, you know, you don't really want to know where it's going. And do you keep any of the suits? <laughs> Honestly, no. <laughs> They're all, uh, it's, it's a weird, it's a super weird couple days at the beginning of every year because we go to this place up in Burbank that's this enormous warehouse called prop uh, house? Western Costume. Oh, okay. And it's 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 I'm not kidding, it's a, like a huge valley sized block yeah. of clothes. Yeah. From everywhere. Every era, yeah. every anything. And yeah. they just pull out this like big giant three racks of nineteen sixty whatever and go, All right, start trying them on. And it's like me trying on suits for three hours. A day. And it's, and it's, uh, they pull. And they're all, they're actually old suits. Oh, yeah. And yeah. they've kept them that, in that good a shape. They're in amazing shape. That's unbelievable. And, you know, I think, I think it was Slattery or, or maybe it was Bobby Morse. One of them had like one of Burt Lancaster's old suits, had, had a thing in the middle of it. Oh, or, really? In the, in that the, it was made for him? Yeah. Oh, that's trippy. So, yeah, that's the, that's the, so they all go back. Obviously, yeah, yeah, they're yeah, rented. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, but they they look great. They're they, hot as hell. Oh my god! They're like thick wool. Yeah, yeah. Old timey suits. How do you not sweat? <laughs> I, I do. Mean, yeah. <laughs> That's so you got to wear the. Do you have the dress shields in there? <laughs> Come on, be honest. Is John Hamm wearing dress shields? I'm not wearing dress shields. <laughs> no, I am wearing an undershirt. <laughs> okay. And we do have air conditioning. Yeah, I do. Well, I I just have like I'm a, I'm a sweaty guy, so I I've had to deal with that embarrassment of uh, I had to when I hosted a show. Uh, in a fairly compromised environment, they had to put dress shields in. I'm admitting that in front of uh, that's a, America that's first and, step. and John Hamm that I wore dress shields <laughs> on short attention span theater in 1992. Now, how do you get from where you started? I mean, I don't know uh, a lot about you. Then again, I you know I might be projecting Don Draper onto you that I want you to have that backstory. Uh, like you know, I I want to know more about uh, your mom, the the hooker, and but I'm not you know, but that's not real, Mark. Did I say that out loud? Is that too meta? <laughs> what was your journey here like? I mean, what was the... Uh, the well, how would you start? Where did you I start? I came from... Uh, I was born and raised in St. Louis, uh, Missouri, and... Uh, oh, my God. Does anything happen there? Yeah. It's did a you, good place to be from. You, have you seen the arch? Did you go up in the arch? Sure. Yeah, all right. Yeah. And arch Cardinals, good. baseball. Yeah. It's, a good, it's a good place to be from, and it's a good place to be a kid. Like, yeah. you get to be a kid for a pretty long time there. Which is nice. William Burroughs was from uh, St. Louis. I, I went to I went to uh, John Burroughs High School. I wonder if it's Louis. his relation. Is that I the don't guy? Who... Think so. John Burroughs was like a Walt Whitman style oh, poet from no. like upstate New York. No, um, but it, it was a good place to be from. You know, I have a lot of good friends that are still there. But it's very much a place where you, when you grow up, you either work for your dad or you leave town. Yeah, like it's just kind of yeah. like you either yeah, kind of yeah. do the same thing everybody's been doing. There's not yeah. a lot of innovation happening in St. Louis, yeah. which is a drag, um, but it is what it is. It's yeah. a very conservative place, and 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 for for whatever reason, I had uh, always kind of wanted to to get out of that that place. My, but I also had the ben. It sounds weird, but like the benefit of not having any kind of parents or anything. My both my parents passed away before I was twenty. Wow. So I was sort of. Very much a vagabond by the time I got out of college. You weren't like, so when you were, uh, your father passed away when you were 20? Yeah. And your mom passed away when you were younger? When I was 10, yeah. Wow. Um, but, so I lived in a lot of basements. <laughs> <laughs> of, uh, of what? Of other people's other homes? Other people's homes, <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> I lived in. I was alive. I was surfing in the, couches for quite a bit in the seventies. Uh, no, in the in the nineties. In the nineties. So it was. Uh, thank God, grunge was in because I was. I was. I did not. There were not a lot of showers. Oh happening. God, really? But uh, but so I, you know, I was. I was like always kind of hustling and and working jobs and waiting tables and bartending. I taught school for a little bit. And uh, what'd you teach? I taught acting actually. I went back to my old high school and and talked to my old uh, theater teacher and who had by that point had gone, who had been crazy overwhelmed with the students that wanted to take acting class and improv and yeah, like yeah. fun kind of you know yeah. stuff that would make their college application look a lot yeah, more, yeah. broader yeah yeah and uh, and he was a really good teacher and a really kind of charismatic guy and I so I was I came up to him and I said hey why don't I take half your course load off you and, and I, I'm cheap you, you know, you'll pay me you know half of what a regular teacher would call it not the cost and I'll be like an intern guy and did you did you think that that was it for you though I mean at that moment when you decide to go back to no you know, I, it was a means to an end I, I needed a job and you were just trying to figure out what the hell to do yeah and it was a it was a job that didn't you know I, it was getting up at like eight o'clock in the morning yeah. seven o'clock in the morning was a drag and what grade were they eighth ninth through eleventh oh boy so it was uh eighth through eleventh sorry so, and uh and uh it was a trip I mean it was a real like kind of thing but it was a thing to do every day and yeah i had responsibility and you you're know when shaping, you're 23 yeah. 24 or yeah. whatever you that's you need that kind and of shaping thing. young minds shaping young minds have you heard from any of your past students that are like dude one of my students is on the office right now how how what are the odds of that and was in bridesmaids that's amazing yeah which one ellie kemper the, oh, the redhead girl she's funny she's very funny yeah did and, you know uh, when uh, she was in ninth grade that uh, she had? She was, she was very talented. Yeah, when she was young, uh, she and her sister actually—they're both. Uh, her sister writes on the office. They're both incredibly talented kids, the and they were back that? when they were fifteen, fourteen years old. It was hilarious. That's unbelievable. All right, so you're teaching. Then do you hit a wall? You like got to get out. They actually asked me to come back for a second year, and yeah. I was at that point going to turn 24, 25, whatever it was. And I was like, well, if I'd love to, but if I don't go to L.A. now, I'll never go. I know like St. Louis will just keep me here. So what did you study in college, Joe, to, to have this dream in place? I, I, was, a, I was a theater. I was a, had a scholarship for theater. Oh, okay. Um, but I was an English major. Oh, yeah, me too. Um, which is useless. Yeah, but, it is. I mean, you know, you, it's useful, you, but it's useless. You read some good books, right? Yeah, you read books. You, you maybe get... a few cliff notes. Yeah, Didn't finish that one. Uh, How's it end? How's it end? <laughs> <laughs> which one's Beowulf? <laughs> yeah, he's Why did I take this class yeah. again? He's a monster, right? But uh, he's a good monster. Guy? Is he a good guy or a bad guy? Just give me just broad strokes. Yeah, funny. yeah. But uh, so, yeah, so I, I figured if I don't go now, I'll never go. I had a buddy, Paul Rudd. Who was out here and, and kind of making it big. How'd you know him? He went to KU with my high school girlfriend's older brother. So they would kind of come back as like the cool older, older right. kids on, on Saying weekends. Saying like, you gotta come like, out, man. Yeah, come hang out. Like, yeah, yeah, it'd be yeah. really fun. And he did all like, right for himself. He's doing just fine. How did, Didn't he start with Neil LeBute and that crew? Like the Well, you know, Rudd started in Clueless. Right. That was his big... Breakout thing. He, how old Amy was he then? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's so young. Twenty-five. Yeah, yeah, was. yeah. But so I figured, like, all right, like, I know at least one person. Right. And I'll make one phone call, and we'll see what happens. Yeah. And and I've never been shy about asking. Part of the benefit of living on people's couches and in their basements is you don't get shy about asking for help. Yeah. Um. And and for the most part, people are. If you're a good guy and if you're a relatively responsible human being, yeah. they'll help you. Yeah, if they're not walking around the house going like, why is this why broken? Is it, why is he still here? <laughs> yeah, he why eats everything. Never flushed the Stop toilet. shitting on the carpet. <laughs> yeah. We got to get rid of this we ham gotta, guy. Like, just murder him. It's fucking horrendous. I think he's still sleeping now. It's noon. <laughs> oh, <laughs> well, that was definitely the case. <laughs> yeah. Well. But um, but no, so so it's um, it, that and then I came out here and it's like all right, get time to find a job. Yeah, and I was an extra on the pilot of the practice. Oh yeah, yeah. I yeah. actually was cleaning out my uh, office two days ago and I found my pay stub from like sessions or central casting or whatever. Yeah, yeah, from yeah. That, from that thing, I made two hundred bucks. And what'd you do? You just did you ham it up as an extra? Kind of. <laughs> I think I was. I, honestly, I think I was asleep. Oh really? Almost the entire time. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I was, I was extra in like the you know it's a big law show, so I was like in the jury, not in the jury, but in the like right in the observer in the, the thing. gallery. Or, yeah. yeah, and yeah, so yeah. I'm like, <laughs> I, think I, I honestly think it was my choice to fall asleep. I was like, I'm making a choice. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna <laughs> yeah, be asleep. Yeah. Why? Up, somebody's gotta be. Yeah, yeah. I've been up all night too. But you didn't say that. No, <laughs> do you mind if I just snooze? I'm gonna. I will not snore. What uh, was the first real job? 
first real job was like doing, doing talking part was on uh, a show called uh, Providence. Yeah, I remember that. Kinda. NBC. Yeah, uh, and it was it was a guest star one one episode guest star, and yeah. I was I it was, I was one day of shooting, but it was an like an eighteen hour day. Yeah, like a crazy long. Was day. it in that moment that you realized, like, fuck, this is a real I was job? Like, Holy shit! Yeah. yeah, and I was like, I'd never done anything where I had to like hit marks. Or, yeah, yeah, yeah. And there was this long, crazy, steady cam tracking shot that they were doing. Yeah, and yeah. I kept missing my mark, and I was like sweating and just like, how, how am I not doing this right? <laughs> yeah, and I yeah, yeah. Melanie Mayron uh, directed it. Who yeah. remember from Thirty Something? Right. And she couldn't have been nicer and sweeter. And the camera crew was really nice. But I was just, I was, I was terrified. I just don't know, like, in my experience with uh, going out on roles, because I'm not really an actor, I'm just myself, and uh, just that waiting to go in, and just how many years of that did you do for television? I mean, sitting in a hallway took with me, ten guys that yeah, look kind of like you. Kind of like you. Yeah, it took me, horrendous. it took me three years. Uh, well, that's not bad. But to do, to where I, where I went on a lot of auditions, but got absolutely nothing. It's heartbreaking, isn't it? Well, it's it's depressing. It's uh, you know, I, it's it's. It, I was listening to Polar on this, and and there's like, she was saying something about like there's that thing where you go and you under prepare because you're like, right. man, I don't just, even care, like, yeah, whatever, yeah. and yeah. then you realize like that's not a great, that's <laughs> really a, that's a really terrible idea. Right. Um, but but there is there is like such a thing of like kind of wanting it too much, and you, where you're just if you're so invested because there's so many things. Yeah. To where you're like, are you really going to like beat yourself up because you didn't get like cop number two on L.A. Med? Right. You know, you're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Really? Like, all right. On to the, like on to the next one. Like there. So you, you do develop a, a very thick skin in a sense of like, all right, there's something else that's going to. You have to. And part of that is being young. I right. Mean, I was you know, 25, 26, 27 years old. You're like, I got plenty of time. But in your mind, did you think that were you were you gunning for stardom, or were you just wanting to work? Did you think you're uh, see yourself as a serious actor? Or? Yeah, I mean, I I, I did because yeah. I that's what I'd done in college. Mm -hmm. I was like, all right, I've I've done this stuff. Like, yeah, I can I can you know deliver important sounding words in order. Uh huh. Um. So so yeah, and, and that's uh, that's John Hamm's description of acting: <laughs> <laughs> serious acting, delivering important sounding words in order. And improv is uh, <laughs> wearing hats and dancing. Yes, I know that. And, and beards. <laughs> Occasionally, you got to throw a beard on. Um, but so yeah, I mean, I, I was I sort of gunning for being Tom Cruise? Absolutely not. No. Um, you know, my, my the guy I always wanted to be most like was a guy like Jeff Bridges. Oh, he's a... who's just kind of always been awesome. Yeah, always. And 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 then like lives in Montecito. Yeah, but you, you think about that guy's career and how long he's fucking been around. It's yeah. baffling. Yeah. And I and I just saw his brother in some TV show last night. That must be a tough relationship. <laughs> the Bridges boys. I think they. I think they both have their. They do all right. They both. They both have their. You know, slots to fill, as it were. So all right. So you do some TV work, and then like leading up to, because like I can't imagine. Yeah, I've never been uh, given the gift of of blowing up, uh, or you know, or even having heat. I've always sort of simmered along <laughs> with 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 periods of uh, having a broken burner, but uh, but I can't imagine what it must feel like to uh, to have the type of attention you're having. But what before we get to that though, I mean, leading up to that, I mean, what was the auditioning process for Mad Men? I know you probably talked about this, but maybe we can figure out some other way to go. Well, it was it was. One one of the things about it was it was I was kind of coming off like the worst year I had had uh, kind of professionally since I had worked. Were um, you making a living? I was making a lot of, of money because I was on a, a TV show for three years. So okay. I like, bought a house and like which show? Uh, my, uh, it was called The Division. Right. It was on Lifetime okay. television for women. Right. So it was like off the radar and all that. Yeah, but it was still a job. Money. Sure. Yeah, right. And yeah. I did s almost seventy episodes of it. Right. So oh, it was shit. like it was on. I was on it for three years. It was a good gig. So you had a reel, anyways. I mean, people could see you work. Exactly. Yeah. And I got to chase. Bad guys and yeah. know, hit them with guns and do all that. Yeah. Fun. You could never shoot our guns because that was cost money, but you could you could hit them. Oh, really, it's a budgetary concern. <laughs> totally. Yeah. So you just had to know. Bring an effects guy in. You have to do a whole thing. I'm, I'm not kidding. That's, that was they had to add our... the gun afterwards, or you you literally couldn't. shoot? No, no, no. There, there has to be like a oh, there whole to... other crew person involved whenever. So firearms well, so what did you, did you just cut? We never shot people. <laughs> we never shot our guns. You're dead. <laughs> Bang. Just believe me. <laughs> Trust yeah. me. I yeah. got you. <laughs> 
Um, That'd be a good show, actually. But anyway, it was it was a great job, and it was really fun. But that had ended, and then I had auditioned for another pilot, which I got, and then got fired off of. Yeah. Um, and then the season that the the ne- following season was the season where I had gone up for literally seven pilots and had not gotten any of them. So you you go through this whole process of audition, 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 test, yeah. no. Yeah. Audition, uh, audition, audition, yeah. test, yeah. no. Yeah. Seven times. Test means you go in for the suits. You go in for all the network guys, yeah. and they go like, meh. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, so Mad Men came around, and I, I got the script, and the little cover sheet was like, it's for AMC... It's this like it was the last one of the bunch. It was yeah. way late in pilot yeah. season. I had to go in on a on a on a pre read mm. because the casting directors were out of New York and they didn't know me. They weren't familiar with me. So you mean on tape? No. Well, yeah, but but meet the casting directors basically right. and read it. So that was the first one, and I was like, oh man, like what? What is this? Like what is this? Thing? Yeah. And I AMC. like started started re- I started reading it, and yeah. I was like, oh wow, this is really good. Yeah. And then I read the whole and I read the whole thing like in 10 minutes and I was just like I walked in the, to my girlfriend I was like this is the best script I've ever read and I threw it on the thing and what she, was it exactly that, like at what page did you say like why is that guy so you know funny? it was it was somewhere in in uh, in the first probably five pages of just like and then when you, realizing I'm not, I don't think I'm spoiling this for anybody at this point but like when you realize at the end when he goes and he sees his, you see the guy's married yeah I was like <laughs> alright yeah this, yeah, is, yeah. this yeah. is good so the big twist yeah, and, and, and then I kind of did a little digging. I was like, all right, this guy's from The Sopranos. It's a real deal. Yeah, like, yeah. I don't know what AMC's deal is. No right. one does. Right. But here's an opportunity. Right. And so I started literally on the very, very bottom. I couldn't have been, had to talk about heat, couldn't have had less heat on me. Nobody right. knew who I was. Right. The casting directors didn't know who I was. I wasn't on anybody's list. Right. And they had lists. They wanted, you know, they wanted whoever fill in the blank of like sure tv I, star do you movie know who stars they were? do you know like and now has it been the funny thing was i think they had gone they went to thomas jane uh-huh. uh for it and they were told that thomas jane does not do television mm-hmm. uh now starring in hung by the right. way yeah yeah um so it was uh <laughs> you guys friends uh i I've, i don't think i've ever met him but uh-huh. he's a wonderful actor yeah um and i love that show yeah but um it's uh so so you know and and then the process goes where I come back, I come back, I come back. I came back probably seven times. By the time I got the part, I had performed every line of dialogue in the, script. the pilot script. You probably you at knew some it. point. Now, when you okay, so just as an actor, yeah, I don't know what your process is, but when you were because I know that when you go into auditions, you're supposed to make choices. Now, in your mind, when you read that guy, at least the first couple of times, you know what were some of the things that you thought? Well, the the. Honestly, like the the thing that that struck me the most was that this guy reminded me of my dad. Um, and what'd your dad do? My dad was a. Uh, our family was in the trucking yeah. uh, business, like heavy hauling semis and really? all that stuff. Yeah, in St. Louis. St. Yeah. Louis used to be a big uh, trucking sort of freight hub. Yeah. hub because it was right on two rivers and it was right in the middle of the country. So anything that came on barges from north or south came to the middle, and then they would disperse it. Right. Um, Did he own trucks? Yeah, we had a fleet of trucks. So you spent a lot of childhood time in a semi? I spent a lot of time in a garage, that's for sure, which was great for a kid, like forklifts just, and like giant right. wrenches. And also, just seen your dad bent over an engine, kind of like you he know, was not quite that hands on. Oh, he no. was he was the owner of the company. Okay, all right, we had mechanics for okay, that. Okay, all right. Um, but he was he was still very he was a very like capable guy, like right. that classic. He was born in 1933, served in Korea, like. Classic right. kind of dad, like so oh, let me certain. let me take a look at it, see if I can fix it. Cigarette yeah, hanging yeah. out of his mouth, bald. Oh you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was uh, it very much reminded me of this guy who, and my dad had a lot of sadness in him too. And he was he was uh, his first wife passed away suddenly. Um, my mother, his second wife, uh, passed away at a very young age. They were divorced at that point, but still, that's yeah. a bummer. Do and, you remember um, that pretty well? Which, your mom passing away? Yeah, vividly. Yeah, no fun. It, was it a, a, a? She had cancer. She had cancer, and yeah, it was it was no it was no good. Was she married to someone else at the time? No, no, no. She was single. I was living with her. She got custody, and my I'd go every other weekend to my dad's. Yeah, and uh, yeah, she had just massive, rapid abdominal cancer. That Ugh. back in the day, you know, this is nineteen eighty. 
there was really in St. Louis. Obviously, it's not like we we're living in the Mayo Clinic or anything, yeah. or you know, Manhattan where right. there's up to date, blah right. blah blah. But there was just no treatment. It was kind of like, well, cut it out. We'll see what we, we'll see what we can do. Yeah. And they took out a bunch of her colon, and they didn't get it all, and it was in her liver and her stomach, Ugh. and that's a wrap. And you were there the whole time. Yeah, it was it was not fun. It was not a not a good time. Mm. Uh, and you're ten, so you have no. The fear of that, like, you know, what, what happens now? Well, there's, but you have no uh, mechanism to deal with right, it either. Right, there's uh, just nothing. Me- you have no, so you have family yeah. and you have, uh, you know, friends, but your friends are 10. <laughs> like, what are they going to be? Is it, yeah. Hey, man. Yeah, wanna, I've been through this. Wanna, yeah. 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 You're not going to like get a, have a drink. We'll see, talk we're not going to get a beer and like, <laughs> yeah. you know, yeah. commiserate. Yeah. It's going to be like, you want to play kickball? Yeah. All right. That's the best we can do. That's yeah. all we got. Yeah. And, uh, and so, but, but it, you know, it is it's the the lamest expression in the world but it is what it is and you can't you can't you know do anything but get through it yeah so anyway th- that's kind of literally what i thought of when i thought of this character was this guy who is living what seems to be a wonderful life and yet is is somehow um deeply deeply uh dissatisfied and uh and and how much we as kind of america and then i go into my little right. theorizing thing of like how much that re- represents america at that time and what was shifting after we just won this kicked ass in this world war and we were riding high and everything was going great and then all of a sudden it's like wait is it is right. it great right kids seem to be bummed out why are the kids freaking out right. why is everybody taking you know acid and smoking pot and right like, why is that bob dylan character so you know, yeah. di- bum, you know, dissatisfied, and he seems to be, you know, and it's like, isn't it great? It's great. We all got cars, and yeah. there's malls, and air conditioning, and yeah. refrigerators, yeah. and ev- it's better than it's ever been. And everyone's kind of like, mm, yeah, 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 I'm bummed out. Right, right. The the truth started to percolate underneath yeah. the, the character, uh, and so that that's a, sort of the metaphor. Is that you know, because your character has this darkness and sort of hangs out in beatnik places, and yeah. does that business, or but, just looking for something, right? Like, what is what are you looking how, for? How Whether you, it's banging some random lady that's not his wife, or right. he's looking for something, right? And ha- always has been his whole life. Did I did, did you identify with that in any way, or did you just sort of transpose? Like, uh, on sure, your... a little bit. I mean, I think I think that's. I don't think that's necessarily uniquely male, right? But I do think it's um, human, human meaning, certainly. But also, like, there's also there's there's something American about that. We are kind of raised as yeah. Americans, arrogantly, American people. arrogantly insecure, Ar- arrogantly insecure. <laughs> sort yeah. of like I deserve something. Yeah. What is it? I, I live here. I don't know. <laughs> I'm entitled. The, the bet. I mean, and and it's honestly like it's getting to the point now. Where it's crazy, the 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 arrogant the arrogance entitlement, uh, entitlement yeah. of people who who it's like, kind of like why are you what do you do why are yeah. you famous why yeah. why are you why are right. we giving you anything sure yeah. you know when the when the dude there's no from, shortage of that in this town well, yeah well, <laughs> because and and the honest reason is is because somebody's watching somewhere right but I think also it's a uh, in not unlike the the show that uh, you know we it, we have a a, a very Capitalism in this country has a, a great history of hucksterism. Sure, and and I think that ab- advertising is sort of you know uh, elevated, romanticized hucksterism. Well, and it's it's, it's uh, it all gets back to the freak show. Yeah. I mean, just look at the freak show. Want to yeah. go see the freaks? Yeah. Sure. All right, carnivals in town. Let's right. go look at it. But it's uh, it's the most powerful. Only costs a nickel. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I mean, how how different is Jersey Shore from a freak show? I mean, just watch, stick them in a cage and watch them all beat each other up, and isn't that hilarious? Well, they and they it, right. Most of it is freaks now. All of it, uh, whatever you know, it is, uh, Kardashians, hoarders, hoarders. Yeah, you know, well, intervention on some level. Anything. We should have some human engagement with that stuff. I mean, like the the hoard, especially that whole type of show with hoarders and uh, the obsessive shows and those kind of shows. Like it's a, just a way for people to judge themselves against something. Sure, I not. feel better. I feel better about me that's because right. I'm not and that. I, and I think that's horrendous. The Jersey Shore people seem to be proud to be freaks, but I was actually a fan of freaks as a kid. Did you ever go to a, a real freak show? Um, no, but I did see that movie Freaks. That, right, that, that I, I was thirties com- weird movie. So I was but- so obsessed with that shit, and I went to the New Mexico State Fair to see real <laughs> freaks, and I went to see the guy with the with the elephant feet, and I. <laughs> I walk into this room. And there's this, this little dude sitting in like a Tarzan outfit, but he's got these horrendously deformed feet with toes sticking out in a weird place. And you just go in there, and he's like, "You want to touch it?" And I'm like, "No, no, I got to I want to go. <laughs> I, wanna, I just want to go home. I want to take a shower." <laughs> well, there became this thing too. At like, what was it in like ninety? 
three yeah. or ninety four, ninety two maybe, where there was the it was like right around when Lollapalooza was a big deal, yeah. and there became this kind of nouveau freak show. Yeah, the sort of Remember burlesque right. slash Mexican restaurant wrestling, wrestling slash yeah. freak show, and yeah. that that became kind of cool. Again. Yeah, Jim like, Rose Circus. Jim, Jim yeah. Rose Circus yeah. Side Show. Yeah. And there was a dude who'd bang a nail through his dick or yeah, whatever it was, yeah, and you'd be yeah. like, wow, what, yeah. what are we watching? Yeah, aren't you supposed to do that at home? This, <laughs> this, <laughs> this is fun, right? Yeah, yeah, no, there's some weirdness. But I mean, in ter- like with, with, with Mad Men, though, like I guess I'm sort of fascinated with uh, well, how you align the emotions with, you know, so you just had a good script, and you were able to sort of, you know, uh, internalize what you thought this character was. And you, you like in terms of physical choices or anything else, you don't have any recollection of wh- how you played that. Um, I, my, yeah, I do, in fact, and and they were and they were very uh, conscious on my decision, uh, especially once I had, I had known early on that Don Draper was not who he who who he says he was. I knew he was a different. They person. told you that once yeah. you got the job. Yeah, right. Um, so I knew the backstory before you got the part. When I got the part. Oh, right. Okay. And. Uh, and uh did you have to sign some oath of no no, no. Oh, okay. I, I just I, I had dinner with matt and he was like you want to know the backstory i was kind of like yeah it would help i'm playing the game let me know <laughs> if it's, uh, I, I basically said if it's something i need to know then yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. and he goes you, you probably should yeah <laughs> and so he he launches on this whole thing i'm like wow yeah like what yeah and uh i was like okay yeah good to know yeah and uh but but i did i do make very conscious decisions especially when when don draper is being don draper in the office he has a very sort of uh almost arrogant carriage about him. You talk about physicality. Right. He's very stay I'm I'm six two. Right. Um and I'm relatively broad. And I think his carriage is a very kind of confident uh say uh, like a, whenever you meet anybody that's a that's a real salesman, yeah. You, you you're kind of thrown by how forward they are because sure, that's just, their entire thing is just like yeah they penetrate you know, every yeah, cell of your whatever body you do, whatever you're, you're like you're overwhelmed mind. right and I, th- I very much took that to kind of in, in my physicality of, of being don draper is this guy who's on it right he is in charge yeah and that's like standing up straight and being sort of you know kind of shoulders back and like let's go and let leader of men kind of right thing. and and it's very different when when it's it, either in California or he's 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 Dick. He's he's who he really is. Right. Is this kind of shy, uh, um, different guy? Yeah, because he can be himself. He can be himself. He can like he can like relax. And with Betty, there's this other thing that you know that there's with Betty. There's like he's kind of playing a role there too. Like, but it's it's closer to to Don. Obviously, right. it's yeah, this yeah. kind of like masculine ideal that that he knows she wants. Yeah. Um, and then the two start to uh, start to break apart when you realize you don't have control over her. As <laughs> yeah, totally. I mean, it's a it all comes. You know, the 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 chickens come home to roost. Obviously, when when she finds all of the information, and, that's pretty. And, no, that's a gnarly scene. Yeah, it was a, it was really hard to shoot too, and it was one of those things where it was um it was a scene that kept getting moved mm-hmm. because we. Just couldn't deal couldn't, with it. Yeah. No, no, no. It wasn't that. It was like we ran out of time or yeah, we were yeah, going yeah. over time and we couldn't. We, our show is, is produced on a shoestring, basically. Um, so we could never really do overtime. So right. we hit 12 hours and be like, sorry, we got to pull a plug. And you're like, fuck. Like, yeah. I've been preparing the scene, like, really want to get it done. And it's like, I'm thinking about it, thinking about it, thinking about it. And finally, like, it, w- it was stuck in the middle of a day, like, where we had a bunch of stuff to do. And I was just, it was, it was a weird thing to be like oh sh- we're doing that now the most pivotal scene of the series okay yeah, uh yeah can i get a minute <laughs> yeah, yeah it was <laughs> like oh man let me put together my breakdown but it was uh but it, it was it was great i mean and, and part of it was you know having worked january for so long and 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 a lot of the people on the on the crew as uh-huh. well like there was a very um it's a very comfortable set people are very comfortable with each other so that that really helps and i i guess people i have to assume that you must have some uh, set design fetishists on there that just respect the period so fucking deeply. I don't know where they come up with all that stuff. I mean, a lot of it's built, um, but a lot, uh, yeah, yeah, a lot of it's just man, you know, recreated. They, they, they make it, yeah, and, yeah, uh, yeah. But a lot of it is, you know, the, the, that's what these guys do for a living. Yeah, but that's sometimes they they, do. It's sometimes like it's not done well. You no, know, like some, some people are bad at their jobs. I've, yeah, I've, you know? I've never seen it done that well. I mean, I think that's sort of the, some of the power of it is that you actually enter that. That world. It helps. It certainly helps. Yeah. I mean, because especially the old Sterling Cooper set, which was basically an entire stage. Yeah. That was just one floor of this building. Yeah. 
And it was it was just awesome. Yeah. Like we'd walk on that thing. Where and, was and that Silver Cup? What'd no, you no, do? no. We sh- you did it here. We shot the pilot in Silver Cup. But oh, we okay. shot we shot the um, we shoot the show here downtown. But people would walk on that set and like kind of lose their mind. They'd be like, "Oh my god, we're in it. This is amazing." Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, because there's not there's not like fake. I have the same thing. Like when I walked on the Thirty Rock set, I was like, "This looks exactly like Thirty Rock. Yeah, like yeah, it looks. Yeah, yeah. They have the little NBC logos yeah. on the on the carpet, and the elevators yeah. are the same. And it's you're you're like, oh my god." Talk about somebody that's good at their job. Yeah. And, uh, but theirs is way more broken up than ours. Ours right. was literally one whole floor. Right. So you really feel like you're walking into a, an office. So did you, is it, is the next series all done? Are you psyched or? I'm very psyched. I'm going to direct the first episode. Really? And, uh, yeah. Have you ever directed? No. No. So theater or anything? Theater, yeah, like in college. Right. And it was, I remember it being the most terrifying experience because it was completely out of my, out of my hands. Mm hmm. And going when I had to put up my directing scene or whatever for class, yeah, thinking like I'm gonna shit my pants. Yeah. Uh, this is like I'm terrified. <laughs> like I, it, I, I, please do, please do a good job, guys. <laughs> yeah. And then the rest of it is, and yeah, then it yeah, went yeah, great. Yeah. And I was like, oh god, like it's 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 well, crazy. Entering a, I like I don't, I know that when you direct theater, whether you're if you're directing a movie script that. You know, there's a lot of uh, uh, choices to be made that you might not have to make in a in a set piece. No, t- right? TV shows are are it's it's directing for dummies. And, and I'm, not but, take, I'm not taking away from a lot. There are a lot of fantastic television directors, but you don't have to do what you do whether when you direct a play or 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 a film. Right. You don't have to establish the world. You don't have to make right. every decision. A lot of that stuff is made for you. And you're and so the, you looking at it that way as a way to get your feet wet. Yeah. And- Exactly. I mean, I think it's 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 going to be a lesson in you know managing people and and communicating and and trying to get what you want and also doing it economically. I mean, we we shoot a lot of pages in a very short amount of time. And your girlfriend's a director, right? Or in she's a she, well, she's a writer and actress and yeah. just directed her first film. So right. I, I kind of watched that. I watched her do that. She was in the film that she directed too. So it was like. Back and forth. I did a movie with Ben Affleck, The Town, that that he I saw that. he uh, also directed and was in. So I'm like watching these people do that, and I'm like, all right, it's possible. It's not. It's yeah, not impossible on a film set. It's just fucking mind blowing, though. You know, just, yeah, hey, especially with like you know guns and blow yeah. em ups and all that other stuff. But if, now, when you do, uh, I mean, I think that must be a big, a big like how how do you approach this, ex- the expectations? of uh of john ham the uh the product now like i mean i have to assume that on some level you're being offered a lot of stuff people see you a certain way i mean i've seen you do comedy and it's interesting that like sometimes in in comedy i are you expected just to play against type uh is, is that what you prefer you know i don't i don't know it's a it's a it's or a you just show up it's a hard it's a hard question to answer because i don't think there really is an answer i mean i i like to work with people who i like um so when i get offered things uh it's it's kind of like all right do i do i like that guy's work do i do have i seen anything he's done but do you get the feeling that like because of who you are uh, uh as draper and as, as and the impact that had on the culture that everyone's going to see you that way so you get it sort of built in uh funny thing if you just act different maybe maybe that's it <laughs> i mean honestly like i got i got super lucky in that for whatever reason, Lorne Michaels decided he wanted me to host SNL. Yeah, and and you were funny, and, and you, I and I was like, oh, oh yes, yeah. But yeah. the first, honestly, the first time I was offered it, I turned it down because Jen and I had a had a vacation planned, and they wanted me to do it right in the middle of the vacation. I was like, I'm sorry, we're going to Greece, like we we've never uh, been. Yeah, and and it was I was kind of like, well, that ship sailed. Well, I that's guess. but that is a sign of uh, uh, on some level that y- you feel fairly confident in your success. I mean, I mean honestly, no. I was kind of <laughs> like, I would, I would love to have done it. I, I, I wish I could say yes. Not but, at yeah. another point in your career, you wouldn't have said like, uh, Jen, we can't go to Greece. <laughs> I, <laughs> Maybe. I mean, <laughs> come on. You, you got to pick your battles. Yeah, yeah. That would yeah. have been a real tough ask. <laughs> But uh, but they came back and said and said we'd love to have you this week instead. And as, I said, oh my god, yeah, definitely. As a fan of comedy, do you like? Are you nervous about doing comedy? Do you are you very on- much so? Because I don't feel like I'm I'm a I don't feel like I'm funny. Yeah. Uh, in the way that professional funny people are right, funny, and right. that they think about structure yeah, and laugh. like here's how yeah. you build it and blah blah blah. I I don't have that, and I don't have that thing that like Hater can do, or Daryl Hammond or Forte, like these people that can 
pull these characters out of their mind. Oh, just turn on and make them fully realized oh, yeah. in four seconds. Hate, haters fucking. Baffling. He's a genius. Yeah. I mean, the guy. I, I, I've never seen anybody. It's unbelievable. I said I had him on a live show, dude, and he was sitting right there, and 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 I I asked him, and I didn't want to, but too many people asked me to have him do his Alan Alda. But anything he does, like this, is giving me this whole weird appreciation of people in our business. Is that when I talk to them, or I'm sitting right next to them, it's it's really the best seat in the fucking yeah. house. And when they turn on the juice for an audience and you're just sitting like this close, you're like, holy fuck. He's like a wizard. He really is. I, it's I, unbelievable. I, I mean, Polar's the same way, honestly. Yep. Like, she she did stuff on that shit. She's an all-star. These are people that spend their lives in front of audiences, All-stars. I mean, and just like, so I'm, I'm happy to... I'm happy to be in the room. Well, you did the bridesmaid thing, and you uh, and you made some very definitive choices, and yeah. you trusted the script, and you were that guy. Yeah. No, it was, <laughs> and again, it's like it's. Listen, uh, the fact that I get asked to do that kind of stuff, and I'm telling you, as a man, great. you know, uh, uh, ask nudity for a joke is, you know, it's a big choice, and you know, and I think that you know, did you have to struggle with that at all? I, I don't I don't know <laughs> you know if you're asking you know it's like it's like it's always that thing where like the girls lay in there mm-hmm. half naked anyway so right. kind of like well here we are yeah you know here we I, go I got to meet you halfway right. it's only fair it's only fair yeah uh, yeah but and 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 again like I, I wig is another one like another person who you just you're, you're like I don't understand what you do so that's been my kind of thing I don't I don't find myself particularly funny in in that way but i'm happy to be you know most comedy needs a straight man too so i'm happy i'm happy to be to be that guy yeah when you talk to your uh representation or whatever because i mean you know, i'm not trying to pry or, or anything else but i mean i have to assume i saw you in the town and i saw you in the the bug movie um with the raining bugs the, the metal oh, bugs uh, yeah yeah they're there still yeah, I mean, when you chose those rules, I mean, they they were what would you call them? Second lead or, or supporting? Supporting, or, sure. Right now, we're. I have to assume that you've had some lead. You probably have something coming out, or something's going to happen. Or, um, I've had a lot of lead things uh, thrown at me, but most of it's been stuff that I haven't really liked. Why? So, why didn't I like it? Um, several reasons. Um, What's the biggest reason that recurs? Mostly, it's like I want to be in. I don't want to be the guy that is carrying a movie. Yet, really? Yet. Yet. I mean, at some point, yeah, but not yet. What I mean, is, why, what's your sense around that? I mean, what? why? Um, Because I feel like you get one shot at that. The first shot, you mean? Yeah. To, and, to, to determine whether or not you but, get to do and, that. And it's the world we live in now. It's kind of the landscape that exists where if something hits, great. Then you're that guy for, you get five more swings. Right. But if it doesn't. Yeah, you get a stink that is hard to wash off. Mm-hmm. But it, it's interesting that you have to be that aware that in 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 light of the fact that because you look at that that can be kind of a curse. Well, I think I I mean maybe I overthink it, but I I, I just feel like I've I've been very judicious in the things that I've chosen to do, and if it's something that's a popcorn movie, whether it's Day of the Earth Stood Still or something, where it's kind of like yeah, I'll do it. It's fun. It'll be a great experience. I get to work with. Keanu Reeves and Jennifer Connelly and, and, you know, on a big, big, crazy studio movie. So which, you, but also you didn't feel like it was on your back. It ain't on me. Yeah. You know, I'm the guy that dies at the right. end. I'm not the saving the world. So it's kind of like, you know, when when it's that time to play that guy, I would I would rather share the burden with Matt Damon or, you know, fill sure. in the blank. Because honestly, like, the new the new paradigm seems to be, you know, if, unless you're Will Smith or Twilight or whatever or a superhero, no one makes no one makes adult movies anymore. They that, they, they make true. they make movies for fourteen year olds. That's right. And fourteen year olds are attracted to like, you know, the shredded twenty eight year old hunky sure. guy. Yeah, but you've got plenty of uh, I would think maybe you know twenty five to seventy five year old women. <laughs> So I mean, that's still the a pretty is they big. Don't go to movies. We, you can get them to a movie, John. I, <laughs> so, like, what do they usually throw your way? Do, is it do they cast you as a romantic comedy lead, or do they want you as a yeah. action guy? Or I get, I get, I get. Fortunately, I get, I get all kinds, and uh, and I just really, I haven't found anything that I've that I've liked. But you writing. feel that if you found that the uh, alignment, yeah, was right. I have no, I have no, like, I have no uh, sort of uh, attitude of superiority toward any genre i think romantic comedy done right is great it's great 
And uh, it's funny because yeah. it's human. It's like people, yeah. but but done wrong, it's awful. Yeah. And and yeah. and we seem to be trending toward these kind of super saccharine, weird, uh, badly made romantic comedies, and it's kind of ruined the genre for a lot of people because they kind of go like, "What is this thing?" Yeah. Well, and if you look at something like Knocked Up or Bridesmaids, those are basically romantic comedies. Sure. And they're just done great. Yeah. And they're really funny. Right. And you know, it's it's uh. It's kind of a lost art at this point. But I think that, you know, the action genre, too, like, that's what I really dug about The Town. The Town, at a certain point, was going to be directed by Adrian Lyne, and it was a $140 million movie, and Brad Pitt was going to be in it, and all this, you know, it's this Hollywood thing. I'm like, yeah. everybody wants to do it, and yeah. they want you for this. And I was like, wow, if these was... people are going to do it, that sounds great. And then I read the script, I was like, wow, this is a really weird movie. Yeah. And then it went away, like those things do. And then all of a sudden, it came back. And Warner's was really excited about making it. And I was like, okay, w what happened? They're like, well, Ben Affleck's going to direct it. He's going to be in it. And I was like, okay. I saw Gone Baby Gone. I loved it. Yeah. I thought he was a very, very uh, capable director. Mm -hmm. Not just some schmuck like yeah. wanted to make a movie. Right. And uh, and he completely rewrote the script and basically tore it in half. Like it became this bare bones kind of lo-fi cops and robbers movie. I was like... I love it. Yeah, I'm on board. I liked I you know, I liked uh, all of that movie up to the point where it's one of those movies where I thought like couldn't he have just been dead at the end? It would have been a different movie, and I, I'm not <laughs> I'm not saying I don't agree with you, but you know he's been yeah. Affleck. Come yeah, on, yeah, yeah, you got to have him with a beard at the end on that. <laughs> he's got to win. He's yeah, got to win. Yeah, man. but uh, now are you adverse to doing a, a lead in a smaller film? I mean, have that have those kind of opportunities? Those are, those on? have certainly come too, but but um, those things be become difficult because. If they're not attached to a studio, then attaching yourself becomes like a longer commitment. And with the TV show, I'm always, it's like, I don't that. know if I'm available right, and right. when are we going to shoot it. And right. um, so it becomes a, a trickier negotiation. That's right. all it is. But there's a lot of amazing. I did a, a little movie called Howl that was about uh, Alan Ginsberg. Alan Ginsberg. Yeah, love Alan Ginsberg. And it was, a, it was a cool, weird, should never have been made. You like played the lawyer. I played the lawyer and Franco played Ginsberg and was really great. And I was like, how did this, it was a movie about a poem. Yeah. Like, how does this movie get made? Right. But a couple of guys in San Francisco, and they found some money, and they made it, and it was really cool, and it was, it's total, like, art film. Yeah, there's a, right there, the, there's a poster for the uh, anniversary yeah. of yeah. Hal, yeah. I, uh, yeah, well, it's also, they were able to build it around the cultural uh, relevance of that, I mean, it that was, moment. It was, it's a, there's, there's a million ways to skin a cat. No, sure. No, no, uh, no offense to your cats. But uh, and so there's a million stories to be told too, and like why not? So you're like, just you know, waiting for a good time. Yeah, you're waiting for the thing that goes. This is fucking it. Yeah. Now, okay. So now let's get around to the 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 final uh, area of questioning. How the hell do you manage? First of all, whatever type of attention is coming at you from the opposite sex, and I imagine the same sex, and and how do you maintain a relationship? Um. Well, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I can't even imagine what because I like I was talking to my buddy. Uh, today about it. it it's like you know you're you've made this impact when you know every all the women want to have sex with you and all the guys want to be you but i think honestly you've done something new and that all the women want to have sex with you and all the guys want to be you but they'd have sex with you too if you <laughs> <laughs> if you gave them 10 minutes first of all thank you yes um I, you know i think all of that stuff is as ephemeral as as anything ever is the, the idea of being a you know, it's, it's, it sounds even stupid to say it out loud, but a sex symbol is such a, is such a movable feast. And, and it only, it, it's only given as much power as you give it. So if you're the guy that's kind of like walking around like, yep, this is what, this is where it's at. Bring it. That's, I got yeah. it in spades. Yeah. Um, then you're kind of, then you're that guy. Yeah. And yeah. no one wants to be that guy. Yeah. Unless, except the people that do. Yeah. And there are a lot of them. Yeah. Um, but I don't know. I, I mean, you know, I, I'm as I said, like I was never a club guy because I was always in the wrong. I've always been in the wrong shirt. Right. You know. I've, I, well, are, we, are we wearing glasses today? Shit, I'm wearing my glasses. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I thought, yeah. glasses are cool now. Yeah, yeah. Oh man. Like I just, I have, I have really good friends. Yeah. That I've known a long time. Yeah. Um, you know, I've I've been with my girlfriend now, going on 15 years. Um, it's just, it's just a thing. I yeah. don't know. It's just a way of being in the world. I just, I like. I like my life. I like going to right, and you. you I like going to UCB. I yeah. like going, 
you know, to New York. I like staying at home. You right. know, I mean, it's like I'm, I've been the same person that I've always been. It's just now there's a brighter light shown on me. Sure. And your so your ego is not a monster. No, that's good. No, it's and it, and I don't think it ever will be. I mean, I, again, part of being raised in the Midwest is having this incredible sense of not only politeness but also kind of. I know my place, mm-hmm. you know, and and I had to get over that in a big way coming out to L.A. Because a big part of doing anything in L.A. is having a little bit of a sense of like self promotion and and like sure. yeah, why not me? Give me sure. that job, like right. I deserve it. Yeah, arrogant insecurity, the yeah. American thing, the American, the American <laughs> ideal. Yeah, but my always my thing was always like, oh, there's probably somebody better that's at it. Don't worry about it. Like <laughs> I'm fine. And they're like, no, we want you. I'm like, well. No, don't overthink it. Yeah, yeah. You're probably, there's probably a better guy out there. Only after you called everybody else. Yeah. Um, but you, so you have to get over that a little bit. But but part of it is also just like, come on, like what, what are we gonna do? I'm yeah. 40, man. I'm not. You know, it's yeah, like yeah, uh, yeah. It's, it's all downhill from here. And you, you're not a boozer, or you're not. You've got all that well. shit. <laughs> <laughs> it's, yeah, you know, it's I'm I'm, I'm you know. But I'm you're not out of control. That, I'm not guy. that guy. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's fucking great. Well, I'm uh, congratulations on all your success. Thank you, sir. And thanks for coming by. It's my pleasure. Well, that's it. The uh, the lovely John Hamm in the garage, not Don Draper. I'm glad I was able to, uh, to get past that, to have a, a nice conversation with John. That is our show, Thursday show, Brian Cranston. Now I'm going to have to spend a couple days knowing that it's not Walter White, but I'll work that out. Please, uh, buy my CD if you'd like. I'm proud of it. Uh, it's called uh, This Has to Be Funny. That's at uh, iTunes. What else is going on? Go to WTFPod.com. Get on that mailing list. I'm going to send out a, an email every week. Uh, please, if you'd like to donate to the show, I'd love to have you donate to the show. We do have advertisers. We are doing uh, okay with that, but we are pretty self-supporting here. It's a small camp at WTF Pod. The premium package is always available, $250. One-time donation will get you a few T-shirts, uh, three CDs, the special uh, Best of WTF Volume 1 CD, uh, some stickers, you know, my love. Isn't that worth something? JustCoffee.coop. Whoa. Pow! Look out! Ah, yeah, just shit my pants. That one took a while. I think I'm, uh, I'm getting used to the coffee. But uh, that's available also at WTFPod.com. We're putting a few videos up there. There's some blogging going on. Always interesting to see who shows up to uh, leave comments. It's a certain type of person. You know who you are, and you know what side you're on. Thanks. That's it. I'm going to go eat some meat and not think it's a dead animal.